Hello, Faith. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, not so good, but uh, are you watching us live? Yeah. Okay. So you have shared your screen and uh, Dr. Faith Chang, he's watching us live. And I will play the presentation he has already sent us, recorded. But he will be here all the time uh, to answer any questions that you will have. And make sure you ask him a lot of questions. He's waiting for us from the other side of the world. Um, Dr. Faith Chang is, as you have already seen in the document, he's the associate professor uh, from Nottingham Ningbo. And uh, we have uh, the pleasure to work with him before uh, in a project uh, called RICS uh, from the Royal Institute, uh, Institute of Charter Ooh. Surveyors. And uh, at this moment, his uh, research is mainly on flood risk management. And he has also worked in, yes. Uh, so he's an assistant professor at the University of Nottingham, Ningbo. Uh, campus China. He has been affiliated as a visiting research fellow with Waters at Leeds University Research Institute. He is currently conducting research on international water management practices with a particular focus on flood risk management and climate risk uh, mitigation in East Asian Delta. So make sure uh, you ask him any questions you have from the or pa oriental part of the world. And I know some of uh, the students here, they would love to ask him a lot of questions. So Faith, uh, be aware, you might be getting a lot of questions here. Um, and uh, he's also, uh, he has worked across human and physical geography on issues related to sustainable water resource management, development, and governance. He uh, has led a consortium by the University of Nottingham and a couple of international collaborative projects. Uh, in flood risk mitigation, commercial properties, uh, and so on. So I'll just uh, start uh, playing the um, presentation that he has already sent us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Faith. Hi, everybody. Thanks to uh, listen to my talk, and thanks Lamata to welcome me to this talk. And uh, I want to engage with all of you to look at uh, how to improve the resilience and improve the uh, risk perception of the cities. And today I'm talking about what I have been researched for a long while about uh, flood risk management strategies in coastal cities. But I want that, uh, everybody to think about what is the best strategies after the case I present in Hong Kong and in both. So um, I just start with slide and uh, if Nobody knows where is Ningbo and Hong Kong. So Ningbo is located on the east coast of China. That opposite Shanghai is uh, has a very big port. is developing very fast city. And one of the thing is my university uh, campus is located in Ningbo by University of Nottingham. And um, the other city, Hong Kong, is uh, famous for financial center. is located in the south. Uh, southeast coast of China, and then uh, is a very important city for important logistics, stock market, and things. So, actually, uh, why the coastal city has big flood weeks? So, one of the things is populations. So, why population is a lot in the coastal cities? One of the things is need to have the foreign investment and government policy. So why foreign investment is in favor to invest in Chinese coastal cities? Of course, there's nice beaches, there are people to swim, there are many things that is attractive. But uh, the other issue is because that person called Mr. Deng Xiaoping, in 1978, he developed the open door policy. So open door policy, one of the example is to establish the special economic zones 
in this is the case in Shantou City. So Shantou City is very typical case that uh, has a big port, but at the back of the port, it has the um, industrial area that is enhanced by the foreign investment. That means foreign investors can develop their factories there and products can export to the port very fast to the world by very cheap tax and in favor government policy. So um, these happen in many cities, and this is another city called Sunjun is um, actually has been benefited in the, in the same um, open door policy and special economic zone policy. So you can see, I got the government picture in 1950s in the same area. Uh, is a fisherman town. Nowadays, is the most important te technology hub, or we call the Chinese Silicon Valley and also all the important uh, financial hope that is in located in the same with the section. Another fact to show you, this is the Sunjum River catchment. The purple color is the urbanization process. So from 1988 to 2008, you can see a purple color from a corner. And then you can see after 10 years in 2008, that has been covered the whole region of the Sunjum River catchment. You can see urbanization is very fast and population growth is very quick and uh, all the investment is ongoing and also um, that means the city is urbanized so that means also when flood comes it will damage people plus their properties so that means the risk is high and uh, so why the flood is coming of course it's related to climate and one of the things is intensive rainfall so how intensive it is so this is the example in 2010 july um, the rainfall could be more than 500 millimeters for 24 hours that means for one day but uh, we understand uh, 500 millimeters rainfall is the yearly rainfall for some countries, for example, in Central Asia and Egypt. So that means we got these kind of rainfall in one day. So it's very and uh, this is another case, even if the rainfall more intensive, we got 100 millimeters rainfall just for three hours. So after that, uh, you can see the um, uh, shopping mall has been flooded. Of course, shopping mall should be withstand those intensive rainfall, except actually the pipe on the ceiling or on the top of the building has been leaked because it's too much rain comes down all the sudden and the pipe can't withstand. So that means um, the rainwater comes down from the pipe leakage. Uh, this is another angle you can see just like the waterfall happening inside the shopping mall that has been done by the project i've been worked with university of west england and funded by rics just a year before and um, of course um, the railway station beside shopping mall also has been flooded like that to seriously damage the public transport system that uh, affect people's daily life and also affect people going home and school. Then, um, but what I say is if we improve the drainage, improve the city's resilience on uh, rainstorms, then can actually um, it's okay. So on the same day in the Hong Kong Stadium, famous to holding up the uh, Rugby Seven World Series tour, and uh, that is the hacker by New Zealand team, right? And that means the rugby is still ongoing on the same day if the drainage is good. And um, the other things is coastal flooding to hit the um, coastal cities in uh, East Asia and China. So um, this is the example of the coastal uh, flooding by uh, Typhoon Randa and Typhoon Randa in 1960s and 1980s.
And uh, recently, also, we have uh, another two coastal flooding in the uh, fisherman town called Taiyo Town. Actually, if people are not familiar with the storm surge by um, enhanced by typhoon, normally uh, the sea level or the tide level is um, fact in the normal days. But once typhoon enhanced storm surge happens, the uh, storm surge Surge will actually uh, increase the mean sea level for one to two meters. That the sea wall normally is okay for normal days, but now is being overtop the sea water to let the coastal water just uh, immerse the town. And uh, this is exactly the next slide to happen. Like and uh, sometimes the more scary things is the combined rainfall and storm surge floods. And uh, for example, the, um, uh, it has the rain right, from the rainstorm, but it also happened the same time for coastal surge. The surge seawater back for the drainage because like Hong Kong, uh, all the drainage is going back to the sea, right? And then that is the fastest way to release the urban discharge. But uh, once the storm surge happened, the seawater fall back to the drainage. That means the drainage is blocked. That means the rainwater can go to the sea and uh, just uh, water lock in the city center we call uh, surface water flooding in the UK. Then um, I got the government data in the next slide here and uh, it has the previous event. It has rainfall, it has high tide, so combined together we have the urban sea sur uh, surface water uh, flood for uh, 0.6 meter to 1.5 meter in different events. That is quite serious. And uh, the next slide also show you on the same event we have that kind of rainstorm is quite serious and so that's why it happened to flood to a dry seafood shop. Listen, dry seafood shop, uh, you can see, hey, actually, I don't like seafood or um, it's fine, right? Dry seafood shop food is fine. But actually, it's not fine because dry seafood in Hong Kong or East Asia is so expensive. So, um, I'm not a fan for shark fin. I, I, I don't like shark fin. I will protect shark as well. And then but people eat those kind of dry seafood for the meaning of prosperity or wealth. So a little piece of dry stuffing may cost 1,000 pounds. So that means if felt like that, so the shop, this shop is easily lost about um, 20 million pounds for one night, you know. And then um, uh, I actually interviewed them and then no private insurers want to give them the insurance because the uh, they worry about the risk is too high and the premium is far lesser than the compensation they should uh, um, afford to them. So um, then it make the lead jack situation to them actually cannot uh, reduce their risk worry. And uh, of course, other than the dry seafood shop, the public transport also being interfered by the third and also there's a tram and the taxi is stuck. And uh, on the dry days, it's fine, everybody's happy, but just in case it has to similar happen, it will be a disaster, isn't it? Uh, the next slide is show you actually uh, in 2017 the typhoon Hato also bank storm surge. You can see the seawater by wind is falling up by the sea on your right hand side. That is not covered in that picture, but it's quite serious. The seawater is hitting to the buildings and the taxi. And um, the opposite town in Macau. Um, the seawater also goes down to the town and uh, Im immerse and flood the car park. Uh, unfortunately, uh, eight people have been died because they can't drive out too quickly and just got drunk. And uh, last year in September, I got the data as well. It has another typhoon to hit us uh, in Hong Kong and Pelver Delta. What happens is the same at the sea. And also, uh, sometimes the typhoon will bring wind 
uh, damage as well. So you can see those effects on wind damages to the town. And uh, but as I said, I think uh, it's hard to prevent um, typhoon or um, um, intensive rainfall. So um, the best way is actually to adapt the very good contingency plan or post disaster management plan. So to use fire service and police to help uh, rescue the vulnerable people like old people or uh, children and give them somewhere to live to reduce the uh, risk of the, from the disaster from typhoon. And, uh, but there are people who want to test the typhoon by wind and rain, so it's not really recommended. And um, just all you know, in the coastal mega cities in the world, actually is facing the same problem as I said, either by uh, typhoon or hurricanes, and uh, enhance the storm surge, uh, intensive rainfall, erosion on the seashore to make the weeks more often, something like that. It's quite similar. Look at around in Asia or um, to uh, America and South America. Actually, it's quite similar. We face the same weeks and issues. So um, that is another research has been done by um, Leco, Leco's at 2007, and Halligate do the same evaluation in Halligate at 2013 by a study found like Asian cities like Guangzhou. Um, Dakota, Shanghai, Lumbai, Tianjin, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Bangkok, Lingbo, Osaka, Ho Chi Minh City, Nagoya is all in very high third weeks if we do nothing until 2017. So, um, Future flood exposure is very high, and then uh, if we don't do nothing, um, we need to start to do something. And uh, what is Hong Kong government has been done is they tried to enlarge the rivers by very, very large to withstand intensive rainfall, which is um, encouraging, but if you do too much, then um, you can see the example here, it caused an environmental disaster because normally the lateral river has gone, now it's all concrete, but not just concrete, they allow the river too large in a dry season, no water or just some dirty water in the narrow channel inside the channel, so cause environmental pollution. That has been criticized by NGO do better is like that. So we can use uh, nature-based solution or green infrastructure to protect food. Um, for example, artificial wetland can, has been used in the last stage of the Sundrum River Regulation Project in 2014. That has been very encouraging by um, NGOs or public as well. So for example, uh, to keep the river bank uh, with vegetations and um, vegetations uh, at the riverside as well. So um, um, at the river bank protect those sediments and this kind of small fish in Hong Kong and Sundrum River as can still alive because they have uh, area to rest and we produce the next of and uh, other than that, increased the resilience in urban uh, part of the city is also important. For example, uh, you can see the color uh, in the map um, has been improved, the um, uh, return flood protection level from uh, 1 in 50 years to 1 in 200 years uh, depends on the importance of the and uh, also in the fisherman town I just been uh, share, uh, they have been built a flood. I think the flood wall is not enough, so better to have the contingency plan in that town when the typhoon comes again. So when the typhoon comes again, the Hong Kong Observatory is the map office in Hong Kong and will release the um, prediction of the track for the typhoon, so uh, the government will start 
uh, to give notice to the town center. And the police will prepare boats and also uh, they will ask people to prepare their house and do more pre pre preparedness actions. So uh, for example, expensive uh, equipment can be removed by arrangement with police. And also uh, some volunteers also will prepare some wise back to protect their doors. And um, the primary school will uh, prepare shelters for flood victims to live there uh, if that is less. And uh, that has been largely uh, helped those vulnerable people, for some old people, to protect their homes and their life, uh, largely for previous typhoons. It is much. And. Uh, but for the long term, I think for Hong Kong, it needs to have a better urban planning system to uh, avoid uh, further developments on the high risk area, unless the developers will afford or the government will afford the flood defense. And um, look ahead for the Guangdong Water Bureau and the whole region. Actually, the Chinese government has been in West to openly assess for the public to use uh, um, in the smart apps and also the internet services to um, understand um, uh, meteorological information to increase the flood preparedness and awareness. So you can they can see uh, how much rain in different region and typhoon track and typhoon news as well by the satellite. So um, the other case is Lingbo. So Lingbo is located in the east coast of China that is open by coastal, inland, by rainfall and mountain fur to the town center. So you can see the red arrow is meaning the fur will come from the mountain and the blue arrow is the fur come by the sea or combined fur as the case like Hong Kong. So um, this is the GIS land use mapping that we have done previously. Uh, you can see the pink color is the urbanization area located in the Lengbo city that is quite exposed by the main river and the river also connect with the sea as well. And uh, the government has been in rest and put the um, flood gates. So you can see the yellow color of the flood gates in the but uh, it's not enough because the typhoon in 2013 showed the town we preferred. Uh, we have done some modeling study by actually understanding the rainfall and the tide issue. Actually, why flood is happened is because very simple. Um, the rainfall uh, is intensive, but also the storm surge by typhoons also happen. So like. Uh, Quite a lot of coastal cities, like the um, um, storm water, cannot go because the drainage is blocked by coastal water. So that's why it's flood. Like this is the slide to show the town is flood. People use boat, and pe the buses still can go, but uh, people need to move their leg. But this is another diagram that um, people use to tell. And I can't, but uh, they need to. And uh, all the supermarket is uh, the food has gone as well by typhoon. And uh, actually, this typhoon has flooded uh, normally um, for 10,000 homes plus a lot of cars, cost a lot. After that, uh, Lingbo learned and started to use smart water system by using big data and also uh, try to use um, the smart system to mitigate flood weeks as you see this diagram here. The next slide is show you some encouraging um, issue by the SPONS program. So the SPONS city program is enhanced by the Chinese government actually to um, use the um, uh, nature-based solutions and LID in America term to um, reduce the urban storm water um, and then to increase the drainage and things like that. So um, just by those green infrastructure. 
and uh, it has the target. I hope the city will improve 20% until 2020 and 80% to 2030 for this kind of in green infrastructure. But it's very challenging because Langbo is a big city. So um, we got a project in the color area in the new called New East Town. Um, so actually. And then um, just want to say about the project background is mainly reduce one off, utilize lateral drainage system, conservation of the ecosystem and hydrological characteristics, and encourage low impact development, reduce impact for urban expansion. And then um, this diagram to show you why is good because normally in the lateral area, of course, um, a lot of uh, runoff can go to the soil and vegetation. But once the city has been developed, actually a lot of um, runoff or um, uh, precipitation actually go directly to drainage because everywhere is concrete. But what Spun City do is just trying to enlarge the green area in the city so um, the stormwater can go back to vegetation and soil. So that then can actually reduce a large pressure of the urban drainage and uh, pipes. So. Um, uh, what we have been done. So uh, this is the new East Town. Used to be just uh, the residential area and farmland. The government want to use Spun City system to change it and also to regenerate the uh, area to be the government um, and um, residential area as well. So you can see uh, we, have, we we show you the main channels in here. And there's the different um, land use. Um, for example, um, green is represent farmland, and yellow represent the residential area, red represent the commercial area. So and um, so what method we have done, we've done some pilot studies in different ports of the New East Town and to describe the full waste and discharge point at the uh, port. And also, you can see we define surface water catchment to understand where the water goes, where is the small rivers, uh, where's the drainage will be uh, has been located, and uh, define green parks and corridors. So uh, we we put the um, uh, green infrastructure there. What what will it be? How it will react with the urban water system and drainage? And uh, also the five road network to make sure um, the road is not further if it's rain, okay. And um, the five pitfall pathway, that's important. So that means uh, when the rain comes down, um, where's the pitfall, where do the water goes? You know, the water has to go somewhere, right? With direction. So if we understand where is the direction, then actually can um, understand and evaluate better of the discharge and reduce the risk. And uh, we use the info work um, model to understand um, uh, land use, for example, different soil characteristics and different uh, sponge infrastructure, for example, bioswell and dry pond and artificial wetland to put there and uh, and analysis the rainfall data to calculate the one off and uh, the discharge by the sponge infrastructure in. So uh, this is some case to show um, in the uh, rain and then uh, by different infrastructure, what does it be, the discharge, where do, does it go? And uh, this is another port to show you um, where to the water goes and where it's um, uh, in different rainfall. And this is another port as well to show you actually um, where to the uh, one off so we have done 
the uh, discharge modeling, so we actually uh, has been understood, uh, use the sponge infrastructure will be very effective to avoid um, one in five to one in hundred years um, rain, but uh, especially for one in five to one in 20 years, particularly will be more effective because if the rain has been too large, actually the sponge infrastructure uh, is very difficult to cope. We still need the pipe because it's too intensive for the bows well, vegetation, soil. Actually, they will be overlocked as well or overflow. And um, um, we need to use combined method in the very extreme situation. For example, the rain is more than one in 50 years to one in 100 years. Because the Chinese government, the Spun City building standard is only can withstand one in 30 years for 24 hours rain, which is already very, very good because um, previously for the normal drainage uh, in the Chinese cities, normally is one in one to one in 10 years. So by this kind of uh, new invention system of Spun City, it has already improved three times than the normal uh, old drainage traditional uh, system. So, um, but uh, we understand the sponge infrastructure is not cheap. So the other work we have been helped the government done is actually calculate um, um, how much for different uh, facilities, for example, infiltration point, green roof, uh, green belt, swells, dry pond per meter cube, how much is it uh, for the total price for the um, uh, port if they need to undertake how much is it by uh, we got this data by uh, actually uh, interview the local construction companies, uh, different companies and get the medium price. So I need to uh, uh, Give a little warning. This is the course. Just uh, we 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 asked the Lingbo construction company. So maybe for the other cities, it will be higher or lower because of labor costs and the material costs. But uh, actually, by our understanding, the infrastructure to build this kind of issues is good, but it's also not cheap. So we need um, big investment uh, if we want to promote. Uh, to have a larger um, coverage on the city. And um, this is the result. This is the bows well and uh, retention pond area. And also this is the uh, river, which is uh, has been adapted with artificial um, the wetland. So you can see uh, some vegetation here. And this is the schematic diagram for the sponge park in the near east town I just show you. And this is the elevation schematic view as well by the elevation uh, eyebrow. So um, I think uh, 30 minutes talk uh, now is almost done, but um, by these two cases, we can rethink about uh, coastal cities management uh, on third. And uh, actually, these kind of strategies is not just useful for Chinese cities, but also to Brazil and to other coastal cities or cities as well. So thank you very much. I'm waiting for the Q&A time. But if you can, just drop me an email by the um, uh, emails address here. I will respond to you as soon as possible, and we can keep in touch and collaborate further. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Can you hear <coughs> us? Can you? Sh yes. Hi. We can see you now. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, let's switch it off and then. This one?
let's call him once again. Hello? Hello, Lamata. Sorry, I try to use my mobile. My computer suddenly has no sound. <laughs> <laughs> Technology, huh? Uh, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it There were some technical glitches, but I think we have overcome that. Um, now, uh, the forum is open to the students, and uh, if they have any questions, I would request if they have any questions, just go ahead. Faith is waiting for us. What do you think yeah, about yeah, the yeah. Sponge CD presentation? Yeah, Professor? I find. Uh, thank you <coughs> for your presentation. Uh, very nice. Um, sorry for, for the problems of the connections. Uh, sorry, sorry. Well, it's my. It's well, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's, it's night in in in. Yeah. Uh, uh, in 2017, I was met with uh, Namrata the first time in Leeds. Faith in was also there. Faith was also there. Yeah. And I was very impressive because perhaps most than half of presentations f uh, of all the conference uh, are related to sponge cities. And this sponge cities is related also to the elites or suits. Uh, but uh, I, I, I am very impressive. My question is, uh, what are the contacts or the projects you or your group has in order to join Brazilian early career students. Here we have a, a classroom of about 30 uh, very, very young people, uh, graduate students for different parts of South America also. Uh, my question is, how can you see uh, this uh, joining concept of sponge, sponge cities to be shared with overseas uh, uh, countries, and especially with young uh, career scientists like Brazilian ones. Because uh, for our latitudes is a, a kind of new concept mm. and sh should be validated in these uh, biomes and latitudes. So that is my question. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, what's your name actually? Sorry. <laughs> Mario. Oh, Mario. Mario, thanks for the question. Yeah, I mean, it's a very good question. To be honest, uh, let's say the Sponge City just in the first final stage after three years, the first time China tests it, right? So I think um, for your question to evaluate with the next step, I think the government is um, drafting the next uh, technical guidance, which is the improved version compared to the first guidance which published in 2014 that asked for uh, 30 cities to try you know they are doing the revised version now so I think uh, I think to respond back to your question first is like I think the government is trying to evaluate the uh, different parameters for example for the storm water because like um, the guidance in 2014 consider just one in 30 years return period in different cities. But the government has not put uh, a very detailed, because different cities have different rainfall, any rainfall or intensive rainfall, but uh, the government has not considered some part of China has uh, very, very extreme rainfall, like Hong Kong or South China. So I think uh, the next version, the guidance will be better to evaluate this kind of thing. But turn back to another, uh, your question, the other part is the grant. I think um, for, the, for the grants, they are welcome for people to apply, especially I, I have seen the um, Brazil, China, India, and Russia, South Africa grant called BRICS, BRICS collaboration grant. So this kind of grant we can do together between Brazil and China and things like that. Um, but I, I mean, um, for the China um, in, 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 in national level or provincial level and city level, they have different kind of grants for researchers. So uh, it's probably it's quite a lot of opportunities as well. So we can, uh, if you want more information, I can send you more, but you can just email me. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Um, 
Any more questions from the students or the participants? Yes, we have one more question here. Hi, Faith. My name is Marina. I'm a PhD student here. And I also study a little bit of low impact development practice. And I would like to ask you because I see some manuals of the United States. And the mainly purpose that they are designing these types of practices is for water quality, for treatment of the diffuse pollution. But here in yeah. Brazil, we have also the flood control problem. So we are trying to design these practices mostly for flood control. And I would like to know there for the sponge cities, this is also your purpose, it's for flood control or just water quality? Are you assessing these both things together? I would like to know a little bit more of what are you doing there in China? Um, yeah, for the sponsity itself, um, uh, is not just for flood control. As I said just before, uh, uh, it is only can protect one in thirty years uh, rainfall. So um, it's not for uh, the sponsority at the moment. At the moment, maybe they change later. But at the moment, the government just want to uh, fix the issue. Is just a mild or a small rains. You know, not not heavy, or intensive, extreme, ex intensive rainstorm. This kind of way. But uh, you're right. I think um, the the purpose they really want to address is just try to purify the storm water as well. So because like. Uh, they realized um, it's the opportunity for the city to do more like that. So, um, but as I said, because uh, the um, uh, time period just start for a few years, so uh, we need to see the more long-term effect on those things. Okay, and another question also is, uh, these spreads, they are designed for... Ada. Uh -oh. Reconnecting. Should we, yeah, call him back again? We lost you. Sorry. Yes, we have more questions. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, carry on. I will continue then. <laughs> uh, and the last question is about these spreads. They are designed for a medium to long term. So I would like to know also if you consider the climate changes in your design in, in some some way or not. You are not considering this. Good question. I think um, very good question. I mean, uh, climate change should be put into practice. And um, but unfortunately, from the last the technical manual, the last um, by the last version that the Chinese government just published us those thirty cities to do uh, has no climate change part there. You know, so I think they. I think as I said, now they revise the next stage of the Spun City program. I'm sure they would put climate change or climate prediction in there. But um, I need to we say again, in the last technical menu, there's no climate change uh, section there. But I'm sure they will do it now uh, for some prediction on those, for, for example, rainstorm and those issues. Yeah. 
Thank you, Faith. Uh, any other questions? I have one question for you, Faith. Uh, okay. So, uh, you mentioned that uh, these uh, tools that you are using or the measures that are used, uh, they are usually expensive. Um, so, what do you think uh, is the public perception on acceptance of such measures in China? Yeah, I think the public don't know that much. That's why the public really love it, you know, because it, they don't, they may not know it's from their tax pay, you know, mm. but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, right, you know, um, I think that the, the public at the moment is quite like those things because like uh, China developed so fast and very urbanized. So uh, now it's come to the time people recognize like, because they earn more money, they, they want to seek a better living quality. Yeah. So they love, mo most of them love these kind of things. I, I interviewed some of the public last year in the summer, asked students to do a small project. They mm -hmm. love it, you know. But um, I think, Lamata, you, very good, you gave a very good question. So I think one of the things I suggest the government to do is try trying to do public private partnership and yeah. try to offload those uh, expenditure to developer mm -hmm. because they are the one get benefit. They sell the house, you see, uh, besides the park or something. So they, they should pay some money to, to build this kind of infrastructure to against climate change or let's say just to improve the water quality on stormwater treatment. So I think I think the next step for Chinese government to do if they want to promote larger size in the scale for the funds, because you say it's absolutely correct, it's expensive. So I think the, the developer need to take on the responsibility more. I think mm. so. Yeah. So do you yeah. think? Otherwise, but, the tax. Oh, otherwise sorry. Otherwise, it's just yeah. go to the taxpayers. It's not fair to the taxpayers. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So public yeah. part, uh, public uh, and uh, private partnership. I think that is also a key thing for Brazil, because we are here in the Brazilian context. So most probably that will be a, a solution. Uh, for uptake of these kind of measures even in Brazil uh, because we both uh, we are all developing nations so I guess as you mentioned rightly that uh, taxpayers shouldn't be punished for uh, in order to feel safe so I think yeah uh, with that point uh, thank you very much faith and uh, if we have more sure, questions sure. from uh, students uh, we will send you uh, in an email all the questions that they have and then you can respond to that accordingly yeah sure i'm not i'm really happy because it sounds uh, it's loads of opportunity we can work together between yes. uk Brazil, and china so i think um just send me email i'm, I'm happy to answer more Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And it's late night in China. So have a good night's sleep. Sure, sure. <laughs> thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you. Let's keep in touch. Bye. Yeah, I will. Bye bye. <laughs> so, yes, thank you uh, for the participation. Now that we have some time, this is uh, supposed to be coffee time. But before we go into the break, there will be some things. I think it will be good if we explain how we are going to uh, go ahead with the workshop from now. Yes. So we have some handouts here. And uh, most of the things that you will work on will be in groups, as I mentioned. So sit in your groups. Don't leave your groups till the end of tomorrow. So. Uh, and uh, you will be working based on the presentations that you are uh, seeing and listening to. So because this is the workshop is a knowledge exchange workshop on social hydrology and vulnerability, so you need to show that what knowledge you have gained, how it is exchanged from these experts. So you, uh, you learned about uh, uh, incline project, then you also learned about the uh, Sponge City pro project. So these are different experiences that these experts are sharing with you. Uh, and uh, just for you to think how those experiences can be used in Brazil. So the context is for you because you are from Brazil. You are young, younger generation who should you know, take the country forward. So it's your duty to think about 
what you will be doing by taking all those knowledge that you are gaining and using it for the country itself. And this handout tells you, so the key focus of this workshop is public perception of climate change risk, as uh, you have asked rightly the question of whether climate change has been taken into account. And for this uh, particular um, project, there was no issue of climate change included. That means you can put it there that that is one important thing that needs to be incorporated. Secondly, understanding the different socio-environmental vulnerability. So how human beings react with nature. That's again part of social hydrology. So you have to see the connections. And third, what are the advanced tools for understanding risks and the developing synergies? So what tools have been used in different parts of the world, both developed and developing nations, and how that can be changed or used or something new maybe for Brazilian context because you know the country best. So you know what, are the, what is the environment here, what is the cultural background. So take all those things into account to think what tools can be used and how people can be engaged in strategies or policy making. So these are these four key focus, which is here in your handout. And now, uh, you will be dividing yourself in groups, as mentioned. And then there is, um, after the break, we will have a um, GIS session. So uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Miles, he is from the UK University of Chester. He will be giving uh, a lecture on open GIS and use of open GIS. And hopefully, you all have uh, QGIS installed in your laptops. If not, there is uh, in the handout itself, you have, um, it is given how to download and install it. And then after the presentations in the late afternoon, you will have time for yourself to work through the um, uh, handouts and prepare your presentation for tomorrow. As and when we will go ahead, I will explain more how you are going to put together your presentation. Presentation will be in groups. And because it's th most, most probably 30 of you, so it will be six in a group. So there won't be too many presentations. But that will be at the end of tomorrow. OK? So I'll explain it further as we go ahead with that. Thank you very much. And let's have a little break now. And then we come back. And please be on time. Thank you. <laughs>